Hey there gang and welcome to this series where we're going to build a single page application using HTMX. Okay then my friends, so I recently made an HTMX for beginners series which covered all the basics of the HTMX library and hopefully demonstrated how good it was for making dynamic web apps. But now what I'd like to do is make a short series to kind of continue that on and show you how you can make something very close to a single page application with it as well. And by single page application, I mean that only one full HTML page is ever served to the browser. And then when we navigate around the application to new pages, we just dynamically swap the content that we see in the browser on the fly using JavaScript. Now, when you think of building single page applications like this, you probably think about using React or Vue or some other library or framework like that, because traditionally that's what we would use to make a single page application. And those tools come fully baked with features like a browser router and ways to update the DOM with new content. But this series is about HTMX and I wanna show you how we can also make those single page applications very easily with just a few HTMX attributes. Now, when we make an SPA using HTMX, the way it works under the hood is a little bit different than if we'd use something like React or Vue. So whereas if we'd use React, it would typically update the page content in the browser using a JavaScript representation of the DOM and sometimes cut the server out completely for just simple template updates, HTMX instead sends an AJAX request to the server for a new HTML template when we navigate to new pages. Then the server sends a fully rendered HTML template back as a response. Then in the browser, HTMX uses JavaScript to dynamically update the page content with that new template we get back. And this follows the approach that HTMX takes in general when building websites, which is the transfer of hypermedia HTML from the server to the browser. And although we do make an AJAX request to the server for that new page content, it's actually less work in the browser itself to make the update to the DOM. And the result is something that looks and feels very similar to users navigating around the website, a smooth and seamless single page application. And the great thing about using HTMX for something like this is that in my opinion, it greatly simplifies the development process and actually makes coding the website a bit more fun. But that's subjective and just my opinion at the moment, having used both React and other frameworks and libraries and also HTMX to build websites. So in this course then, we'll be building a single page application that looks something like this. It's an application that lists out a bunch of articles which we can click on to go to a new page with more information about that article. We can hit the back button to navigate back and we can also add new articles by coming to the form at the bottom. We add a title and a body for the article and then just submit the form. When we do that, we see the new article appear in the list without any page reload or anything like that. And also notice when we navigate to new pages or hit the back button, we're not loading a new full document in the browser every time. We're just instead sending Ajax requests in the background for new page content, which then gets swapped into the browser by HTMX on the fly. And notice also that we do update the URL in the address bar as well when we navigate around, much like we would when we use React or Vue to make an SPA too. So this is what we're gonna be building using HTMX in this series. And by the end of it, you'll be in a good position to make your own more advanced, probably single page applications using all the techniques that we learn. Now, before you go steaming ahead, I am assuming that you already know at least the basics of HTMX because we won't be covering those in this series. If you wanna learn the basics first, definitely check out the HTMX for beginners course that I've created and I will leave the link to that down below this video. Also, we'll be using Node and Express to make the back end of the application. So ideally you have a basic knowledge of Node and Express. You'll also need Node installed on your computer. Again, if you wanna learn Node and Express first of all, then check out the Node crash course and I'll leave the link to that course down below this video too. Finally, I'll be using a template engine called Pug to create any views that we make and then get sent back by Express to the browser. It's a really simple templating engine, so you don't really need to know much about it before you start. And we're not gonna be making any kind of complex templates with it. And also I will explain everything as we go along too. All right then, so let's get started. And to get us started, I've made a starter project for us which I've then uploaded to this GitHub repo right here. So the link to this is gonna be down below the video. Incidentally, all of the course files for the project are on this repo too. And to download the code for a specific lesson, you just need to select that lesson from the branch dropdown. 
and then you can hit the code button to download a zip of that lesson. Now we're going to select the starter project branch to download that code. So do that first of all, then we hit the code button to download a zip of this branch. Once that's downloaded, unzip it and open up the project in VS Code. All right, so I've opened up that folder inside VS Code. I've renamed the folder just so it's a bit shorter. And if we take a look inside the package.json file, we're gonna see we have a couple of dependencies we need to install, Express and Pug. So to install those, open up a terminal, first of all, and you wanna make sure you're in the root directory and you should type npm install to install those dependencies. Right then, now all the packages are installed, I wanna give you a very quick tour of this starter project and all the different moving parts involved. So. First of all, the bulk of this project is just a basic Node Express app, which we can see the bare bones of in the app.js file. So you can see we import the Express package and also this router from a file inside the routes folder, which we will see shortly. Then we start the Express app. We use some basic middleware to set up a public folder and that's for static assets, things like images and style sheets. We also use some middleware to pass any incoming data either in the form of JSON or URL encoded data as would be the case for web forms. Below that we specify we'll be using Pug as the view engine. At the bottom of the file we tell the app to listen for requests on port 3000 so we'll be able to access the site on localhost port 3000 in the browser. And finally we say app.use to use this router object that we imported for the root URL of the site. So then, that router is imported from the index file inside the routes folder. And all I've done here is put my routes in a separate file to keep the app file cleaner. So inside this file, we import express and we use it to make a new route instance. Then we create a get request handler for just forward slash. And in that instance, we render a view called index, which we'll see in a moment, and also pass that view a title property so we can use it within the view. Finally, we export the router so it can be used in that app.js file. So like I said, just a really simple express app with, at the moment, just a single route set up for the homepage, which renders the index view. Now, all the views in this project are gonna be inside the views folder right here, which is where Express automatically looks for them. And you can see already in this folder, we have that index view for the homepage called index.pug. Now inside that, the first thing we do is say we're extending the layout view, which is inside the layout folder. And that means take that layout file, render that template, and then render this content block within it. So the layout file, if we take a quick look, just includes a head tag, which contains a link to the HTMX library so we can use it, as well as a link to a style sheet which is in the public folder. So I'll show you that later. And it also has this header for the site title on the top bar. Then below that we have this block content line. And this is where the content block defined in our other view, the index, will get output when it extends this layout. So then back to the content block in the homepage index view, we've got a main tag and then within that, an h2 with this text and then below the main tag we've got a footer tag with an h2 inside that and by the way if you've never used pug before this is the syntax we use to make templates we just specify the tag name without angle brackets or anything and then any tags that need to be nested inside that tag we place below it indented by a single tab so all this pug template code right here would look something like this HTML code when the template gets rendered. A main tag with an H2 inside it and then also a footer with an H2 inside that. All right, so that's about it then for now. We've got a simple express app with just one route registered for the home page, which renders this index view that extends the layout. And by the way, in that layout, we link to that style sheet, like I said, which is inside the public folder right here. And it just contains a bunch of styles already. So we can just focus on the HTMX for the rest of this series. And you don't have to watch me type any styles out. All right, so let's run this app by either using Nodemon if you have it installed or the Node command if you prefer. I'll be using Nodemon in the root directory to run the app by saying Nodemon app and then just hit enter. And then once you've done that, we should be able to preview this on localhost port 3000. And there we go. We can see this very, very basic homepage in the browser. Okay, cool. So now we've got this app up and running. The next step is to show some data on the screen. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. 
You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up, and I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson. Bye.